verses that I want to share with you this morning that um, really just caused me to, again, realize how much He does love us. And if you're feeling like He doesn't love you this morning, um, it's not based on other human love, really. What, what fills us is the love of God. And so 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, John writes and he says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. Uh, I love the way that, uh, I think the King James and the NIV translate this verse. Um, see what kind of love the Father has lavished on us, that he's poured out on us. It's kind of that soupy kind of love, that God has just lavished his love out on us, that, that we should be called the children of God. And I thought about that, that before I came to know Christ, and, and I only love him because he loved me first, and he extended that love to me and it drew me. But before I knew him and knew his love, um, the Bible tells me that I was an enemy of God, and I was a child of Satan, and so were you. We were of, of his lineage through the sin of Adam. But God so reconciled us to him that he adopted us as his children um, to be called the children of God, not in the sense that humanity can be looked at as the children of God. We're, we're all creation of God. But there's that bringing in of us that were lost into the family of God that he has adopted us and made him his very own. The psalmist describes God's love in Psalm 36, verse 7, as, as it being an unfailing love, that it will never fail. He translates it here, how precious his steadfast love or his unfailing love. It never wanes, it never diminishes, it never decreases, it never can increase because he loves us with an infinite, unconditional love. How precious is your steadfast love, O oh God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. And here, I love the language here. The way the psalmist describes God's love is that, that it's like us taking shadow underneath his wings. And of course, Jeremiah 31.3, um, we love this. He's speaking to Israel, but we can apply this in our own lives as well. Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. It's an everlasting love. Again, it cannot diminish. It will not stop. It will not cease. His namesake depends on his everlasting love. His faithfulness, his character, his very nature will not allow his love that's extended to us be anything other than everlasting, or he would not be as he has portrayed himself to be, as an everlasting God, eternal God, faithful to his word and true. A passage that we're all familiar with in Ephesians chapter 3, where Paul is writing to the church there, and this is one of his prayers that he's, that he's praying for the church, and his desire is, is that they would know how deep the love of God is. Listen to what he says. He says, uh, let's begin in verse 14 of chapter 3. He says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father, from whom ever, uh, every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that... Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the depth, the breadth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And here Paul is saying that, that, that we can be strengthened in our inner being, in our inner man, by recognizing and realizing the height, the depth, the breadth, and the width of God's love. That that alone is our sustenance. And so applying that in my life, I, I had to do that this morning to, to recognize, although I can never fathom the depth of God's love, 
or the riches of his love, but but to meditate on and contemplate on the breadth and the width and the height and the depth of God's love. He says that is what strengthens our inner man. And so if, if you need strength this morning, then I encourage you to go to God's Word. Go to your concordance. Look up different verses of God's expression of love and ask the Holy Spirit, God, ground me in your insurmountable love that that I might just know it and sense it and be anchored in that and be strengthened in our in your inner man the last passage I could read so many different passages this morning but the last passage is probably one of my favorites in all of scripture Romans chapter 8 and Paul has preceded this in Romans chapter 6 and chapter 7 uh, communicating to us how far removed we are from God because of our sin and, and in, in chapter 7, he, he goes on to describe how even though we are rooted in God's grace and his, his mercies and his forgiveness, he still finds his battle within himself. That as he's been renewed in Christ, he has a desire to do things, those things which are right, those things that are pleasing to God. And, but yet he has this battle going on that his flesh wants to gratify his flesh. And he says, oh God, who's going to save me from this wretched man that I am? And he says, Christ. And then he concludes those thoughts. With the way that I would sum it up is that, that, that even though we may falter, even though we are not always right or righteous, um, even though we still battle the flesh, do not let the enemy rob us of the joy in God's goodness and his graces and his mercies because his love is going to keep us forever. There's nothing that can ever take away his love for us. He says, beginning in verse 31, and I'm going to read this whole passage. He says, what then shall we say of these things? If God is for us, then who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he also not graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It's kind of a rhetorical question he asked there. It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Rhetorical again. Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who has been raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? Shall tribulation, shall distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, he says in verse 37. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Be encouraged this morning. God loves you. God loves us with an everlasting love.